like today, I'm changing out this evaporator coil in a Goodman air handler from a sweet old 1988, baby. And I think it's an A36-10. The dash 10 meaning the heater size was built into it. 36 meaning it's a three ton capacity. We are up in the attic here. I am looking across, there's our air handler. It's facing the wrong way. That's okay, whatever, I don't care. I'm gonna take the return off of it, climb around that side and work on it. And I'll set my fan over here by the opening for the stairs and pull some cool air and throw it up there. I have my fan up at the top of the stairs, get some cold air and bring it up there. I can also open up the air handler door and let the blower keep running after I'm done pumping the system down. Either way, we'll get some cool air up there and get the hot air out of the attic. You guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pump the unit down. See what kind of pressure we're running right now. Got the Z manifold here. 50 pounds on the high side, not too good. If I can get them both in there, might be a little difficult. If I can bend them down a little bit, a little re engineering. Our suction gauge is kind of tilted downward, so I won't be able to get that one on there. You see we're running 150 on the high side. Z manifold, buddy. That's where it's at. We have Z manifold reporting, which is me hooking them up and going, looks good. That's reporting. We have very low refrigerant pressure. You can see that it's around 20 pounds, 20, 25 pounds. Very low refrigerant pressure. Quite the leak on this one. Taking off the service valve caps. the system down, have the disconnect open so I can pull the plug on it whenever we get it down to the uh, pump down all the way. See it leaking a little bit. So there we have a leaky coil and some valves that are leaking as well, looks like. To seal those up too. some nylog on them.
Good thing is the service valves leak is not uncommon, so you can usually seal them off. These caps have gaskets in them. We'll reseal those. We get down to business inside. Uh, I'm almost afraid to take this door off so it won't ever go back on again. After. Might take everything out at the same time. If I can rotate it around. A couple brackets on the coil looks like. The one. Very old. Dangerous this is. brakes or anything like that. Shot. You gotta cut this off and bring it out. Cut it off as close to the coil as possible. We can reuse it. We'll just cut it off way back here. Bend it around. We might not use all that. we we'll go ahead and have it available if we need it. Be prepared in case a little bit of pressure built up in the line after we shut it off. Shouldn't be too much. This is also the place where I recorded my first infamous blower relay video. That was like four years ago, I think. Bend it up so it stays out of the way. And you guarantee that this coil is not going to be the same one or same shape that this one is. It's going to be some sort of retro print, so we're going to see how that works out too. But they said they still carried them. I carried one that fit, this old boy, which it is old, it's, I think it's 1988, pretty old. The lines are protected, so no debris can get inside of them, tuck those out of the way. I need to get any water out of this pan. There's a drain there. We put one of our rags in the drain and kind of block it off so when we, we pull this pan out, we're going to have to lift the coil out and put a new coil in that pan and slide the pan back. I'm sure the pan's in fabulous shape. It doesn't look like it's leaking because the, the drain pan doesn't have a bunch of water in it. But the drain pan does not look great. It might behoove us to one day lift this air handler up, slide a new pan underneath it. That'll be a suggestion of mine. Something we should be able to do uh, because it's uh, fairly easy to reach. We should be able to take this return duct off, slide the pan out the end. We can cut the secondary off of it and slide the new one in. Maybe jack up the air handler with some hanging straps, hang it off either side. Some of our insulation's sagging down too. Anyway, I'm procrastinating.
to clear this out. I'll put a little bit of stuff in the way of the drain. I'm going to block it up manually. But I will take this out when I'm done. I promise. down in the coil there it doesn't look too too awful for being so old I want to say that I cleaned this one before in place never cleaned it never pulled it out and cleaned it but not too bad catching that lip on the end down here so I'm going to have to make sure we are coming in straight well, we're coming in straight I might need to cut that thing off I don't think I have the snips up here or I would not just pan and cut it off it's just a pain in the buttocks Well, I can try to get my little strap on there. I don't know if it fit or not. Probably not since it's not technically. Well, we'll see. The little drain connections are there. Good enough. In this case, it is. It's just like freaking hard as a rock. All right. Let's see, our drain will match up there. We can still 
kind of falling apart. I have a couple areas, you see the insulation hangs down here, but I have a couple screws in that already keeping it up. It's like this little beater. Get those lines out a little bit farther. And we're gonna check the orifice. See what size it is, make sure it's right or really close. you are a sloppy brazer. Unless you suck at the brazer. pressure check it and then we can move on to restarting the system put in a vacuum all the good stuff that we love to do on a daily basis I start brazing using Silphos 15 what I typically use I did buy some stay bright 8 to use I never really used it much before but I felt like a lot of the guys were using it and I wanted to see what all the fuss was about, so I went out and bought some of it. And I haven't really used it that much except for practicing uh, at home, because I didn't want to use it in the field before I took it for a little bit of a spin. And uh, it is, it's, it's definitely, you have to get used to it. Uh, a lot lower temperature. Um, it's interesting to use it. The first time was kind of a learning experience. The second time I got a little bit better hang of it. But might be useful in the field for applications where you're doing like, I don't know, like a reversing valve or a TXV that's, uh, you don't want to burn it. It's kind of cool. But 
I haven't really used it in the field. There's a lot of guys who use that stuff in the field, and uh, they could comment on when they use it. But that's what I'm going to assume. I'm going to sweat this fitting off right here. I got my rags right here. I can dump it in there. My rags are down here if I need them. Not really worried about burning anything on this thing. I don't think if, if, if I do like this, I don't think anyone would know the difference. I got my little fan. I'll move it. That took a lot of gas to get. Let's see. What's oxygen was going through there, the regulator was turned down, just rumbling around the truck to hit something. Don't need a whole lot of heat to get this off, it's 3H. things up and fit those up. Even though there's sort of a bail, bail end on this uh, 3 8 we ought to be able to use it still. Fit it with some solder. It'll be all good. job taping. Can't even see my tape anymore. Just thinking about some cool stories. I remember the first time that I was brazing. So, oh, a long time ago. And, uh, come on. I was up in the attic brazing an air handler, and I swear it took me seemed like an hour to braise that thing. I don't know if it was just the time going by from just being nervous or what, but I was really laying it on and I didn't use a whole lot of heat because, you know, I was afraid to burn anything and I didn't want to damage anything, so I didn't use a whole lot of heat. But it was just, that, that unit's still running, I do believe, miraculously. Because there weren't no, you know, brazer with nitrogen for me back then. And, you know, I must have been building up a healthy amount of scale. in there or do we need to expand it out? I'm going to hit it with the expander. Although it has a bell end on it, it doesn't want to go in all the way and I'd like it to go a little bit farther than it is going. I like the Hillmore expander, it's a good tool. I really enjoy using it, it makes life easy. Get your expander head, this one's 3 8 Put it on there. Leave it inside the fitting. Rough looking area right there too. I don't know what's that? What that is? Maybe I 
we're going to be returning it a little bit to get that piece off. They don't make copper very thick nowadays, I'll tell you that. So we'll hit that too. There's just a little ridge there on top. Looks like it turned a little bit, not too bad. Good idea to put that on before I light the torch. Alright. Like I said, don't take a whole lot of heat for three eighths. It'll sell fast on top and it'll run all the way around. We already sealed up that first one. Let me check if I can get the top. I'll back it off a little bit. I don't want to burn down the house. Yep, yeah, we're good. A couple embers in there. off for a second. We'll cut this other one off. Expand it out. Do our thing there. You guys might be thinking, is it, uh, is it just ridiculous to do a repair on a unit like this? It's so old. You think in 1988, a lot of our techs that are watching this weren't even born in 1988. That would have been, you know, 27 years ago. In 1988, I was, uh, well, I was not quite turned 10 years old. So you got to wonder, is there logic in this? I mean, this is obviously the request of the owner of the property. I did tell him that it would be wise to replace the whole thing, or replace the indoor at least, because we have a newer outdoor. But it was just too expensive for him. train coils uh, in there well on more than one occasion they're wall mount air handlers I know I've done their wall mount air handlers and they've come in and said well that's that's obsolete you know it's obsolete I said well it's it's only a 1999 model which you know you start thinking about it that's been a while It seems like not too long ago. So I was in the business in 1999, but if you think about it, it's 16 years ago. It's a whole person that can drive. Old. Oh, scary. Like I've said a lot of the time, I got into the business when I was 14. I worked for my father up until 2009. And then I... And I started working for myself. One day I'll do the blog about uh, more, more into why I am working on my own instead of with my father. Kind of a free spirit in a lot of ways. So, 
like doing things my way. Of course, fathers don't always want to hear that sort of thing. But I knew I wanted to make my own mark in my own way, so that's what I did. It sort of happened by accident, but you know, I'm glad it happened. Insulation is that and starts the insulation burning. I don't want too much of that. Holy oil, Batman. Let's get a little bit more heat than that, though. Pressure check it. Yep. And once I pressure check it and it passes inspection, we can get all this stuff and pick it up. I might still test this blower capacitor out just in case. Just since we're up here. I replaced it like four years ago, but I replaced it with like one of the little Chinese capacitors. So we'll see if it's actually uh, holding good after all these years. It's always a good idea to check these small items that are easy to check while you're up here. I got the power turned off to the air handler. Got my meter set on microfarads. It's properly illuminated. Y'all can see that. Well, let's see there. You can't see it. Well, you know what? I'll have to show it to you manually. Alright, we got our capacitor right here. Take one of the wires off of it. Got our patented fluke plunger leads on it. And we have a capacitor that is going right around six point six five six seven six six seven five six seven. 6.7, 6.6, so if it's a 7.5, it's a little weak, so we're going to grab another one, and we'll get one of the USA-made ones, and hopefully that'll last a little bit longer than this one. i got my USA capacitor here, old Trade Pro. It is a Trade Pro, there you go, Trade Pro. USA-made, has a little green sleeve on it. See what kind of microfarad reading it gets. The other one was a Gemtech, just a regular generic. Uh, I'm sure it was made in the People's Republic of China. But that is neither here nor there. I'm gonna get my Let's see we're gonna put one lead on our capacitor here. Yipper. One lead on our capacitor here, and this one is 
a balmy 7. So it's still less than the rating, but higher than the other one. Go figure. green capacitor in place. So we're going to move on to buttoning the doors back up. I'm going to turn the thing back on so I can suck some more attic, attic air out of here while I'm working. And I'll see you guys once we're done with that. I don't think we need to watch putting the doors back on the beast here. Okay guys, the vacuum is going. I'll let it run down, get it below a thousand microns. Then I will go ahead and release the charge and we'll go ahead and check it out. I'm sure we have to put a little bit of R22 in it, which we'll go ahead and do and get her all set. Guys, I'm gonna take my induct psychrometer head inside so I can shoot out some info so I can calculate my target superheat. I'm gonna stick it in the return grill because we have about a five foot return. So it'll send it out to my meter down there. And I can calculate target superheat. Yeah.